Alright, this video is going to be about polar equations of circles, which is really one of the most basic curves you can have in polar. Um, and there are three important types that I want to talk about. So, uh, the first one is going to be circles that are centered at the origin. Um, and those are actually probably the most basic of all the polar curves. Uh, the next type are going to be centered on the x-axis, so either the positive or the negative x-axis. But they're also going to be tangent to the origin. Um, and they all have a very similar equation, so we'll look into that. And then the third type is where they're centered on the y-axis and they're tangent to the origin. Um, and actually, we're just going to kind of infer a relationship there, and uh, it turns out to be true. So let's take a look at um, one of the ones that's centered at the origin. So we have to remember that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Those are really important in polar. Um, you got to know them. So say we have x squared plus y squared equals 16. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace x with r cosine, and I'm going to square it out. So r squared cosine squared of theta, so that comes from x squared. And then plus, I'm going to replace y with r sine, and square it out. And then that'll equal 16. I'm going to factor this a little bit. To get this, um, cosine squared plus sine squared, just like uh, anywhere in math, if that shows up, that's just 1. And it's lucky that it showed up. So we just have r squared equals 16. And from there, uh, when you're dealing with polar, if you have r squared equals 16, you usually just reduce that right down to r equals 4, and you're kind of done. Uh, but you might be thinking, what about r equals negative 4? Well, you could also have done that. It's just less traditional. So let's take a look at this. Um, so here's our circle with a radius of 4. And what's going to happen is theta is going to increase kind of in this direction, counterclockwise. And we are going to start at the point 4, 0. So r is 4 and theta is 0 and we trace in this direction. So we're tracing counterclockwise because r is positive. So as theta increases, um, r is also going to move kind of counterclockwise, I guess you might say. Um, so what happens is we end up here at 4 comma pi over 2, and then we trace around, we get to 4 comma pi, keep tracing, we get to 4 comma 3 pi over 2, and then to finish the circle off, we're going to end up here, um, and this equate the point rather we could call 4 comma 2 pi because the polar representation of a point is not unique So 4 comma 0 so r is 4 theta is 0 and 4 comma 2 pi uh, Are actually the same point so in Cartesian coordinates they would end up at the same place But in polar we can represent it two different ways. There's an infinite number of ways actually um, Okay, so that took 2 pi uh, that's always going to happen for circles that are centered at the origin but what if you really liked the uh, r equals negative 4 option? Well, it's just a little different. It's still going to take 2 pi. Um, and theta is still going to increase in a uh, counterclockwise way. Uh, except what's different about this curve is when theta is 0, r is negative 4. So you start at the point negative 4, 0. And then as theta increases and goes counterclockwise, what happens is since r is negative, um, instead of tracing in the first quadrant, we trace in the third quadrant. So in this case, uh, the curve is kind of traced out in this direction. So starting at the negative y-axis and going toward the negative, uh, sorry, negative x-axis and going toward the negative y-axis, which is a little weird. Um, so by the time we get to this point, we're at negative 4 comma pi over 2. So it's like this curve is never where you expect it to be. Um, but it's not really any different. And you could have done this. It's just not very traditional. So if you have a, a circle centered at the origin and you know its radius, then what we're going to do is we're going to go with this. So x squared plus y squared equals a squared is going to become r equals a, and uh, theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so that's centered at the origin. Let's take a look at um, this one. So this is the quantity x minus h squared plus y squared equals h squared. So this is going to be centered on the positive x-axis, and um, it's tangent to the origin. So I'm going to kind of expand this out. So this is something you want to learn the pattern so that you never have to do again. Um, you see an h squared on both sides, so I'm going to cancel those out. I'm going to rearrange this to make it a little clearer what I'm doing. And then x squared plus y squared, well that's r squared in polar. And then uh, minus 2, and then x here, x is r cosine theta. So we have that, and then there's still an h, and it still equals 0. I'm going to move uh, all that junk over, like so. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to divide by r. I know that r is not always 0, so I'm allowed to divide by it. Um, so r equals 2h cosine theta. And now let's kind of look at what's going on here. So um, I divided by r to get that. Uh, that's confusing sometimes. Uh, here's my circle. So 
Um, there's the center is at uh, h comma zero. So this point over here is actually two h comma zero, which means that two uh, h is the diameter. So what we can do is we can actually just write this uh, equation over here as r equals the diameter times cosine of theta. That's actually always going to happen um, if you're on the positive x-axis. It's just r equals diameter cosine theta. Um, and then the negative x-axis would be negative diameter cosine theta. So it's a nice pattern. You can probably guess what happens with um, the positive y and negative y axes at this point. But we'll summarize that on the next slide. Um, so what about how long this one takes to trace out? So let's say we start with this. So I redrew my circle. I also graph cosine. So what's going to happen is when theta is 0, um, r is 1. And then I'm going to trace along this uh, the cosine graph at the bottom here. I'm going to trace that until I get to pi over 2. Uh, and you can see that r goes from 1 all the way to 0. And if you look on the polar graph, um, r goes from 1 all the way to 0, and theta increases in a counterclockwise direction. So we get the top half of the circle. And then we can do the bottom half of the circle actually is traced out between pi over 2 and pi because r is negative. So we end up with this. So to get the entirety of the graph, we only need 0 to pi. Um, so that's important. If you're centered at the origin, it's going to take 2 pi to finish the circle. If you're centered on an axis and tangent to the origin, it's only going to take pi. And that's a big deal uh, later on in math. So let's kind of, uh, let's summarize this. So it's centered on an axis. So if we're on the positive x-axis, it's going to be r equals the diameter cosine theta. If it's the negative x-axis, you're going to get r equals negative diameter cosine theta. Um, positive y-axis is going to work out to r equals diameter sine theta. And negative y-axis works out to r equals negative diameter sine theta. Okay, so that happens all the time. But for every one of these, uh, theta goes between 0 and pi. Okay, so you, you got to remember the values of theta. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is use these facts to do a bunch of questions really fast. So I'm going to convert all of these. So x squared plus y squared equals 121, centered at the origin, so it's just going to be r equals 11. Um, x squared plus the quantity y minus 6 squared equals 36. Centered on the positive y-axis, and the radius is 6, so the diameter is 12. So I'm going to end up with r equals 12 sine theta. Um, the quantity x plus 8 squared plus y squared equals 64. Centered on the negative x-axis, uh, radius of 8, diameter of 16. So it's going to be r equals negative 16 cosine theta. Um, let's see. r equals negative 40 sine theta. So this is one where I might actually draw a picture. So let's draw a little bit of a picture. So I already know what this looks like. Knowing what a polar curve looks like makes it very easy to convert it to rectangular. If you don't know, uh, it can be very complicated. But anyway, I knew that this was centered on the y-axis and a diameter of uh, negative 40, or rather, a diameter of 40. So this point down here is negative 40, makes the center uh, at negative 20. So I can write x squared plus quantity y plus 20 squared equals 400, which is negative 20 squared. And let's do one more. So say I know r equals negative 16. Well, it's going kind of in my mind in the wrong direction, but it doesn't really matter because I know it's centered at the origin, has a radius of 16, so I know the final equation will be x squared plus y squared equals 256. All right, so uh, that's polar equations of circles. Uh, the values of theta are really important, and uh, really memorizing these patterns can save you a lot of time, so I definitely recommend it. I hope this was helpful. Good luck.